What's up everybody? So I gotta make a bunch of these bottle openers and I'm gonna show you the process I use to make them. But more importantly, we're also going to analyze that process at the end and see where we can make some improvements. No matter what you're doing, whether it's making a YouTube video or making a product to sell, I think it's a good idea from time to time to take a step back, analyze that process, find out where your gaps are and figure out what you can do to fix them. Now I'm gonna be using my laser and CNC for parts of this. And even if you don't have one of those or maybe you're using different software from me, I still think this video will be beneficial to you. I'm going to be cutting these out with my CNC router. I have the file posted on my website for free if you'd like to make one of these. I'm using Carveco Maker Plus for this, which is some amazing CNC software. If you'd like to learn more about it, I'll put some links in the description to some more in-depth videos. This portion of the project consists of three tool paths. First, it will cut a pocket for the insert. Next, it will make this clearance pocket. And finally, it will do an outside the line profile cut. I've put in some tabs to keep the pieces from flying around. I was able to fit 18 of them on my material, which measures 5.5 by 24 inches. Now that the first piece is done, I can reset the CNC and move on to the next operation. If you're trying to minimize your total time for a project, it's important to keep yourself moving while your robots are doing their job. These tabs are only a tenth of an inch of material and are pretty easy to just break by hand. I find it best to push the part out through the bottom so I don't get any tear out when they break off. You could also use something like a jigsaw or oscillating tool to cut them apart, but this takes more time. Once all of the pieces are off, I can move on to rounding over the corners. I'm probably a little overcautious here, but I like using a push block to hold my workpiece. I continue the process of swapping material out on the CNC and rounding over the corners until all of the pieces are done. Next, I need to sand every piece. This is probably the most labor intensive part of the whole project. Now that we're done with the sanding, we can move on to the next stage, and that's going to be laser engraving my logo onto each one. To do this, we need to make a jig that will hold multiple bottle openers in a precise location. I'm going to be using Lightburn and my Xtool D1. If you'd like to learn more about this laser, I'll put a link in the description. There's three elements to this design. The outline of the bottle caps, this blue line here which serves as a reference to start from, and of course, my logo. It's important to note that I used the same file for the bottle opener to get this outline. The Xtool D1 has a very fine beam and didn't require me to scale the design to compensate for the kerf. In Lightburn, each color represents a different operation. To make our template, we're going to leave the black and blue operations enabled. I'll disable the red operation by turning off the output. I'm still selecting all of the elements of the design, so the machine always starts from this corner here. I have the job origin set to the lower left corner and have start from current position selected. The machine should always return to this start location, but in case I bump the laser or want to use this template down the road for another project, I can just move the crosshairs back to this point. A proper jig should always have a reference for your start location. Now that we have the jig cut out, we can start engraving my logo. We'll enable the red operation and disable the others.
Right away I can see there's a problem here. I know I said we'd make an assessment at the end, but I really need to speed this up. If we look at the preview, you can see how much time the laser is wasting in this red area between the logos. To fix this, we can double click on the red operation and change the selection to fill shapes individually. These time estimates aren't always perfect, but it looks like we shaved off about 15 minutes for every six parts. For our whole run of 60 pieces, that's two and a half hours. I would like to move on to the next step, but unfortunately my laser is kept in another part of the house and I don't feel comfortable leaving it. I'll have to wait for them to finish, but at least I can get some design work done on some other projects. There was a little bit of residue left after engraving, so I quickly hit each piece on the sander again. I thought about using a number of different finishes, but this homemade mixture of cutting board butter sounded like it would be the easiest to apply. I covered each piece with a thin coat and came through and wiped the excess off. I only let them sit as long as it took to get all of them done. Finally, all that's left to do is install the metal insert. I use a self-centering drill bit. These save a lot of time and only go deep enough for the screw. If you do end up making this project, be sure to check the length of your screws to make sure they don't stick out. With the half inch thick material I used, they were right on the edge. I probably would have opted to get shorter screws instead of shortening them myself with a sander or something just to save time. Now let's go back and analyze the process. So the CNC part was pretty good and it actually timed up perfectly with rounding the edges over. Doing these two parts simultaneously did make me realize something though. Uh, I probably need to get another dust collector for my shop because I use the same vacuum for my CNC and my router table. And if I do operations on both of them, I need to pick which one has the dust collector on it. I probably could have sped the CNC part up just a hair by combining the two pocket tool paths together. Instead of doing 16 individual pockets for the insert and then coming back and doing 16 individual pockets for like this inside piece, I could have just done them together. Um, and that would have at least saved on rapid movements. It wouldn't have had to jump around so much. Sanding was the real time killer here. I really think I could have saved some time by using something like one of these sanding mops. I made these out of poplar and oak and noticed that the poplar got a lot more tear out in the sides and this required a lot more sanding. So I could either fix this by adjusting the feeds and speeds on my CNC or maybe just not even making them out of poplar at all. As you saw with the laser, just making one small change made a huge difference. And this also showed why it's important to check your simulation. For the more hands-on tasks like installing this insert in the back, the only way I can really see to save any time would be to get some assistance on it. Uh, this might be a good time to cash in on all those times that somebody said I owe you. These are just a few of the things that I notice, and it would be even better to get someone else to help review the process with you. Sometimes we have blinders on that make it hard to see a problem. Chances are you know someone else in the maker community, and you can work together to help each other grow and improve your processes. If you notice something I missed, I'd love to hear about it in the comment section. There's a few more videos that YouTube thinks you might like, so I'll see everyone over on one of those.